Hi, my name is Luke. I'm a pixel artist. I'm also known as Sadface or Sadface RL on social media. This video is part of a tutorial series I created for my supporters on Patreon and Twitter. This should fill in any gaps I may have left. Before I start, if you have not seen my tutorials and you are a complete beginner, then please start by following my tutorials in the link below. Please note that this is aimed at people with very little to no knowledge on this subject. So let's get started. I like to start by making a grid. This helps me get a good measurement for my room. I always use odd dimensions for my tiles. For example here, my tiles are 7x7. Seven seven. This helps keep things like floorboards even. The room does not have to be the same size as your grid. I mainly use the grid for alignment and measurement for things like doors and windows. Once I have the room outlined, I then thicken the walls by extending them outwards. Unless I have created a palette, I will just test a few colours to see what I like. Here, I measured out the floorboards to get an even width. This is why I used odd dimensions for my tiles, because if my tiles were even, my floorboards would not fit correctly. Here, I am creating a style where the floorboards are a mixture of similar tone. Once I find some colours that I like, I will then start to blend them a little. Always remember to add depth to the edges, otherwise it will look very flat, much more like paint than wooden planks. At this point, I will begin to remove the outlines. This is optional, but I much prefer it without. As we do not always get everything correct the first time, you will see me adjust certain parts as I go along. Here I decided that I needed to further increase the thickness of the floorboards. I then also decided I wanted to have a concrete base. I now move on to the skirting. I decided early on that my light source would come from above and also through some windows, however, at this point I am keeping it very basic. I am going to use a much brighter value on the top edges of the skirting. The face of the skirting will be a similar value to the walls. For some bizarre reason, my mind went blank and I do apologise for this as it could be confusing. When I created this door frame, I did it totally wrong, which will be corrected later. For some reason, I just lost focus. But with this, I get to teach another lesson. All the different parts of your project should be on a new layer, making it much easier to edit and adjust later. I use the grid again to measure up the windows. I finally realised my mistake with the door, and I fix it. The mistake was that I had made the sides very thick, and the top I had left very flat. I decided I wanted the window higher, so with it being on another layer, it is much easier to just move. I then test the transparency of my windows using a green for some grass outside. Once I have the windows in position, I remove the walls behind them. There is no need for me to use a grid to create the rug. I just create a new layer and use a black outline to find the size that I want. I give it a woolly texture by using the spray tool. 
and another nifty tool called Blur. I use the same measuring technique for a table. I then raise it from the floor before adding some legs. Now I have my table measured, I make all other layers invisible, allowing me to focus better on constructing the table. I don't want to put the legs right in the corner. I want them to be a little further under the table. I also leave the last leg visible because I want to use glass in my table. I remove the outlines and give the top of the table some more depth. I like to carve my table legs, I feel this makes them a little more beautiful to look at. To add glass to my table I simply erase a section and use a slight transparent black colour. You can use any colour really, if it was not for all the red in my scene I would use that, it's a nice colour to tint a table glass with. This last leg was not aligned correctly, so I created a new layer and used a white colour so I could see where the leg should be placed. I decided that the door or the table was not correctly sized. As they are on separate layers this was easy to modify. I take a copy of the table and modify it before putting it back into the scene. The door now seemed the correct size, however, I wanted to make it a little larger just to fit the style I wanted. Again, with this being on a different layer I can easily modify it while in the scene. I finish here with a picture frame and some very simple grass. There is so much more I can add to this scene. For example, the lighting and shadows are not finished, but I feel that this is an all different lesson. This brings us to the end of my isometry series. I hope that it has helped any struggling beginners. As always, feel free to message me for help or advice. I wish you all good health and hope you have a fantastic day.